inside our show. Yes, yes, yes. And of course, we'll bring you yet another exciting episode right here on City TV. Well, you know how your Sunday evenings are with the Upside Out Show. And today, we've got something really, really exciting for you. My name is Premier Dinyami. Mine is Nana Tufo. Remember, the show is brought to you by Vodafone. The future is exciting. Ready? Ready? All right. So, yes, entertainment, information, education, right here on the show. But before we set the ball rolling, let's go for a break. When we come back, we introduce our guest. And, of course, party begins right here on the Upside Down Show. Coming up on the Upside Down Show today, we have a conversation with two young ladies doing art in a unique way. One painting with makeup and the other using art to recycle bottles. And later, we speak to educationist MP for Busunchu constituency in the Ashanti region and Deputy Minister of Education, Honorable Dr. Yao Ose Educhum, right here on the show. This is Fact Finder from the BBC. We live in a world where news travels fast. And sometimes, it's hard to differentiate fact from fiction. Fact Finder brings fact-checking from the newsroom up close so you can separate truth from chaff. Be empowered to tell what's fake from what's real. Watch Fact Finder by the BBC on City TV every Wednesday at 6 p.m. City TV. It's your world. You welcome back. This is the Upside Down Show. And today is going to be super amazing, yes, super indeed. awesome. Because we are going to be talking to one man that I have always admired from afar. I don't know mm -hmm. about you, Nana. Yeah, 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 I've always liked him. I mean, since he burst into the political scene in the country, everything you hear about him is positive. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, before we do that, <laughs> we also have some two amazing young women mm -hmm. who are doing some extraordinary stuff. You know, I get so excited when I see um, ladies in painting, yeah. in electronics, you know, exactly. stuff like that. I, I think it has yeah. some kind of I, I factor, to, I tend you know, to get to it. jealous because I'd always wanted to do art, but then the best I could do was that uh, as our Captain Planet. Thing. Oh, I mean, but, you can I mean, do you something. You get to do a zigzag with the head. You can and that's do something. <laughs> I can always sit back and admire people. You know, sometimes yeah. I ask, why can't I do certain things? Mm -hmm. But I guess um, we can always uh, appreciate yeah. and also celebrate the people who can really um, translate their creativity exactly. onto paper. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> I guess today, F and, and J Art. Show us some love. <laughs> All right. All righty. So today we're going to be discussing art. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Now, okay. beautifully, we have Freema mm -hmm. and Jane. Jane. Yeah. I'm excited because you are Freema. <laughs> and I think it, it's allowed, right? Yes. So yeah. how are you? I'm fine, thank you. You are the one I met on Instagram. Yes. Please. Yeah. Yes. And I went on your page. And you do beautiful painting. And then Jane came along. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us about yourself mm -hmm. my name is Frema Ado. Frema what? Frema Ado okay mm. and I'm a student of Kenya University going to final year okay um, I like to paint but my course I'm offering is uh, integrated rural art and industry okay mm. yes we do more of woodworks bamboo clay leather and uh, textiles uh -huh. and painting is my hobby mm. So I decided to do this. Mm. All right. So okay. just me. I mean, that's what you go with, right? Just mm. me. Yes. All right. Let's hear from you. Tell us who you are and then uh, how you develop the interest for art. Okay. Um, my name is Jeanette Asari. Mm -hmm. I completed this year Kenya ST. Okay. And is that where you met? Yes, mm. please. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. okay. Yes. Um, I do painting and sculpture, BFA mm -hmm. painting and sculpture. So... My interest is basically in arts painting, mm. so I do my works based on them. Yeah, mm. awesome. Now, the kind of art you guys are doing, it's not the ordinary or the typical art we we'll see on the streets. Uh, you guys are using household items to make art. Mm -hmm. How did this come about? Um, with the household items... Oh, but I... why do you have your hands behind you? <laughs> <laughs> You're not in the classroom. <laughs> I'm very shy. Oh, no, 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 
didn't realize. <laughs> shake it up, shake it up, shake it up. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> with the household items, mm-hmm. I use bottles. Yeah. And I use bottles because my my mom had a lot of bottles we couldn't discard, mm. and she really loved them. So I decided to change how they look like for her. Wow. And um, after changing the design. I realized that a lot of people liked what I was doing, mm. and so I decided to do a greater a, a mass production mm. of it. Yes, and one thing I also noticed was that uh, glass bottles are very difficult to recycle yeah. mm. than plastic. So changing the design and getting another purpose for it really helps yeah. the environment. Mm. Yeah. So, so are you selling these things? Yes, please. Do they pay? Yes, please. <laughs> really? Say, so I read too much of it in school. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right, so um, we are going to be um, going through the process yeah. today. Yes, please. Ready? Yeah. yeah. So you walk us through the various yeah. stages, are you begin, uh, and then the final stage and then through it all we'll have we'll be throwing in some questions and then you'll be helping us and then your art say your, your paintings here you mm. you're telling me that you so who, who does these ones yes, me. just so me just you do yes. okay. okay so for my use uh, mainly for the bottles, bottles. Yeah. yeah and then just me you are for these paintings mm. yes. and you use makeup is it a makeup I know, or maybe in the world of art, there's something called makeup that we don't know? So tell me about what really goes into these paintings. Okay, first of all, is the makeup you know? A normal mm. face, yes. foundation, yes. powder, stuff? Yes. Wow. Yes. wow. Okay. So, so what do, how do you do it? Um, my interest is in makeup as a medium, and I wanted to use that one to... And I don't see makeup really as a face. <laughs> Uh-huh. I wanted to use that one to tell a story than to use the actual paint. Mm. So, um, with this particular work, so I go mm. around in town, and I was also interested with the idea of birth marks, scars, mm. and skin okay. complications okay. that makes people look different in their own way. Mm. Uh-huh. So, with that, I interview most people, ask for their permission for their images to be taken before mm. I do take the images. Wow. And when I'm done, I go to my studio, I do the makeup on their face. And the other thing is, I bring the whole concept of makeup mm-hmm. on their face. So I use the eyeliner, the eyeshadow, the contour palette, mm. and the foundation, every process. Mm-hmm. And wow. I bring it onto the canvas or paper. So these are pictures of real people? Yes. Mm. yes. Okay, wow. so like random people you meet on the streets? Yes. Or people mm. you know? No, I don't know that. <laughs> wow. wow. And do, do they get to see the final product? Yes, they do. Awesome, mm. awesome, awesome. So, so how do you do it? Because I, when I touch it, it doesn't stain my hands. <laughs> and this is foundation, so yeah. the drying process. Yeah, I had to experiment a lot. First, mm. I had to try glue and water. Because when you are drying with just a pencil, you could use that one too. Make okay. it fixed mm. for a long time, mm. but it didn't work. So I also tried using the fixer, the one you use on your face. Mm-hmm. When you're done mm-hmm. the makeup, yes. the one didn't work at all. Yeah. <laughs> so I decided to use a fixative. Okay. It's a spray-like container, mm. and that one fixed. Mm. Okay. So, okay. After so that's that, what you use. Yes. Wow. And so I know makeup is expensive. <laughs> it is. So buying makeup, I mean, for paints mm-hmm. you could get maybe something bigger, but makeup really comes in small quantities and mm-hmm. quite expensive. Yeah. How do you fund these things? Well, my parents help a lot, mm. and I, I got the help from someone to she distributes makeup in Kumasi. Okay. So yeah. who is this person? Um, is. I just went to her shop. I didn't really know her. I was looking for a place I could buy makeup products. So mm. I decided to show her my work and then let her know that this is what I'm going to use the makeup for. Okay. It's not something I'll get my money back. Mm. Mm. But it's also as a way of using the makeup as its own source for creating beauty yeah. to yeah. create something also beautiful. Right. Yes. So I got the help from her and she at least reduce the price for me okay. a bit to get okay. it. Awesome. So for a piece like this, how long will it take you to complete it? Likely a day. A day? One day. Whoa. <laughs> wow. So you really know your game. And how much would you sell this for? Okay, another thing is I don't basically sell all these type of works. So they are, are using all in for? a series. Okay. Okay. Yes, for exhibitions and art galleries. So what wow. are you going to be using these for? Apart from exhibitions, you won't sell them? I can still see myself as a practicing artist. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. I haven't really gotten my hand yet. Uh-huh. I'm still practicing with the medium that I found. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. So before I'll be able to really sell it 
out to the public unless I've been able to study how long the makeup can last on a paper or according to who's standards just to you <laughs> because I, I i love them for yeah, me they're, they're i see this beautiful. and it's beautiful and i would love yeah. to have those on my wall but mm. you say that you haven't gotten there yet where do you want to get to <laughs> <laughs> um i basically did them for my final year project of okay. which is okay. still my arts practice mm. okay so i want to become an artist over the time so mm. i want it to be my medium i use Okay, so, that's mm. right. But for wow. you are in business, you are selling. <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> Great. Okay. So right. and we're gonna come over mm -hmm. and then we'll go through a process. Can we do that now? Yes, please. Awesome. Fantastic. Awesome, awesome. So Frema, the presenter, will join me to Frema the artist. You know, and then you we know, get to you know. enjoy the process <laughs> of uh, turning these bottles into art products. Right. So where do we start from? We start yeah. from here. Mm -hmm. Um, you get paint, um, mm. specifically acrylic paint, and you can get them from any of the paint companies. That is the particular reason why we're getting acrylic? Um, because it has a gloss, mm -hmm. yes, and it has some adhesive mm. nature okay. so that it can stick. Can hold on to yeah. the bottle. It can stick to the bottle, right? Because the bottle, the bottle is very smooth. Yeah. Mm. So you dip the bottle. Okay. Okay, yeah. I thought you I thought were going to use a brush, brush too. No, wow. <laughs> the brush. I would have even failed from the beginning. <laughs> you can use the brush, but it takes a lot of time. Mm, yeah. yeah. So you dip it in, and you use a spoon to help apply. Okay. Wow. So can you? Um, role mm -hmm. people, can you be teaching people like young people who want to learn art? Would yes, you please. have time to teach them? Yes, mm -hmm. I do have time to teach them. Okay, so if I bring mm -hmm. my sons, you can teach them. Yes, please. <laughs> nice. How much would it cost? Uh, it depends on how long I'm teaching them and what I'm teaching them. Oh, wow. Okay. 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 So, how long will it take this to dry? Um, this would take about seven hours to dry. What? Wow. So you really need to be patient, huh? Yes. Because it, it has to take um, yeah. not natural air to dry. Yes. Yeah. Okay. If you put it in the sun, it will crack. Okay. Oh, okay. So when it's dry, mm -hmm. how is it going to be like? When it's dry, this is how it's going to look like. Mm -hmm. Okay. Huh. No, we are dealing with paint, so <laughs> you're not going to have any stains anywhere at all. Yeah. Okay. So from, so so what are we doing? To, what are we painting? What exactly are you going to be doing? Um, something abstract. Okay. Yes, we are going to use the beehive for design and okay. Okay. flowers. Mm -hmm. So next stage. So you, you first of all draw out these shapes on yes. the paper, yes. and then you cut them out. Yes. Mm -hmm. so okay. We're creating a stencil. So okay. when when you sketch it, this how it will look like. Mm. When you cut it out, this mm. how okay. it will look like. And you can use um, okay. the cutter to cut out the design. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. All right. So let's pick one bottle that we can design. You know, mm -hmm. from start to finish. So okay. which one would be would you be comfortable with? The watch okay. bottle. Okay. So the next stage. So if you're watching and you have bottles at home, uh, which you don't necessarily have use for, perhaps you could learn and then transform your bottles into some art products. Interesting. Now when you come mm -hmm. to our homes, so you're going to be beating you yeah. with the printed bottles. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it makes more sense in, in this COVID era. I mean, yeah. if you're home with nothing to do, you can busy yourself with this. Okay, no, it so makes a whole lot of You sense. run the stencil around the bottle, then you yeah. tape it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. This is to hold it tight yeah. yes, on can, the bottle. To keep okay. it from slipping. Mm. Okay, great. Wow. Okay. So the next process is to um, dab into the colors mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. you prefer. And my first is yellow. Okay. After dabbing, this is how it will look like, but you have to smear it on uh, when, when, if you use a palette or yeah. um, a plate, mm -hmm. you have to yeah. um, clear the excess off. Yes, please. Okay. And you dab it carefully onto the bottle. But we should also be doing some. <laughs> <laughs> or we'll spoil it. 
Oh no, you didn't. Okay. Hmm. Now maybe you should try. Well, I was thinking you would give it no, a I'll shot. No, I'll hold this for you. <laughs> <laughs> and then... Alrighty, let's see. For dabbing, I don't know. Maybe I... Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think for dabbing I can dab. And not too hard. Yeah. Oh, gently, huh? Yeah. Very okay, see. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. So I need to take my time and dab. Yes, please. Mm. <laughs> do the dab. Hey, do the you dab. know, Nana hey, is dancing to anything and everything. <laughs> <laughs> So how long does it take to design a bottle? Um, a whole day yeah. for one bottle mm. because it has to dry before yeah. you dab and all. And it takes seven hours to dry. Wow. Yes, please. Mm. We need to be very patient for this. So, so how many stages would the bottle have to go through before you get a final work? So this is stage one. This is stage, stage two. two. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, how uh, many more stage, stages? Stage three is the drying of this. this. Okay. okay. Yes. And then stage four is? Is um, cleaning of uh, mistakes and trying to fix up. Okay. Um, if the paint passes somewhere, you don't want okay. it to pass. So assuming we've done the cleaning and everything, then what next? Then we are done? Yes, yeah. we are done. Okay, so okay, then this one we are, we are done, kind of, right? Yeah, so I have to go move on to see some of your yeah. finished uh, okay. products and then... So you put it on, so we've put all our paints, mm -hmm. right? The different colors we want. Yes, please. So it is dried, we have done the cleaning. Okay, so that is it. Oh, wow. Yes. So, so that's, that's, that's the beehive design yes. yeah. on our bottle. Right, and we Beautiful. also have um, the a rose, a rose design okay. as well. So we can also be? stencil that. Okay. Okay. But you don't have to tape it. Yes, you don't have to tape okay. it. Okay. Yeah. Can I try that? Yes, well, I was please. It. <laughs> no, please. You wouldn't spoil it. Will I spoil it? Yes, no, sorry. please. If I spoil it, it's to be another design, right? Yes. Good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So what colors are we? Oh, different colors. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Gold and silver. Gold. Okay. I like gold. <laughs> <laughs> Should I tape it for you? No, I think I'll be fine. Okay. Would you have taped it? If you were doing it, would you tape it? No. I won't tape it. <laughs> mm. Let's see. Aha. Uh -huh. So now I have two framer painters. Yeah, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Is that how it's oh, supposed to be? Yeah, yes, please. Oh, okay. I thought you were a pro. Why are you asking questions? <laughs> no, just about the idea you know. <laughs> You're sharing ideas, huh? Exactly. Also. Hmm. You know, when it comes to these things, you know, it's not really about who started, it's about who finished. You know that. <laughs> uh -huh. Now you're taking all the credit. I do them small. You can mix a bit of this over. Over it? Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Then you smell it. Oh, I remember from it. I'm <laughs> oh, a good okay. student. Oh, okay. <laughs> hmm. Well, it's looking good, actually. Yeah. <laughs> so is that it? Let's see. Okay. Yeah. So I take the mm -hmm. pencil off. Gently. Okay. That's oh, a wow. flower. Yeah. Oh, wow. It's actually looking good. <laughs> yes. No, I'll take this p uh, bottle home. <laughs> I'm going to show to my kids what I've done. What will be the finished product? The finished product will look like this. Okay. Oh, wow. Wow. Oh. Wow. Let me see my flower. <laughs> <laughs> it's not bad. Nah, you're you're, yours is nice. <laughs> yours is nice. My mind is equally not bad. Yeah. Okay. So when we are done, this is what we are going to have. Nana. Awesome. Awesome. So awesome. these are awesome. the bottles. Mm. Yeah. This Actually, is looks good. nice. Right. So wow. if you'll have to sell, you have to sell the three together. Yes. Please. And how okay. much will something like that go for? Um, for this, there will be this will be thirty-five. All three. Yes. Please. Oh, wow. oh, but add some cool. to it. Eh? Um, <laughs> the, the it takes one whole day to do one bottle. Add some to it. Okay. Like maybe 50, 50 or something like that. Yes, 50. <laughs> you can get me to manage you. You'll we'll make money, you know? Yeah. All right. So, <laughs> just me and Framer, this is so beautiful. Mm -hmm. And um, 
especially when we know that we can just take normal bottles at home oh, yeah. you know and create something beautiful to decorate our home so yeah. how do we reach you on social media and I mean how can people yeah, if get you want to buy um, some of your products where can we find you okay on social media I am um, Firma at gallery we're well, looking at me like I know right? <laughs> <laughs> on Instagram yes yes but um, for, if you want to find both of us we have a page together okay. that's FNJ at all right, so just me and Fremat, yeah. this is really beautiful mm -hmm. and we've learned something, yeah. you know, you guys are doing so well, good luck and yeah. um, well done for this, I mean, it's so beautiful, your yeah. creativity and um, we've learned something new, so exactly. the next time you come to my home, well, watch out for, for these like things, like you know, we, we've got ourselves <laughs> dirty, you know, <laughs> <laughs> dirty, trying to do the work, yeah. that's, that's the upside down show, when we come back, we have mm -hmm. someone, someone that you really would love to yeah. listen to. Don't go nowhere. We'll be right back. Yeah. City TV is live on DSTV. Go to channel 363. On Go TV, access City TV on channel 182. On a digital TV, please press the menu button on the remote control and run a new search on your TV. Take note that without an antenna, you cannot access City TV on your television. City TV can be accessed on a free-to-air digital box like the Go TV and Star Times box. City TV, it's your world. Welcome back. This is the Upside Down Show, probably brought to you by Vodafone Ghana. The future indeed is exciting. Well, I hope you're ready because today we're bringing you a very, very exciting show. Now, I am particularly excited about today's episode because we're going to put a human face to the definition of the importance of of education. It's Absolutely. Going to be very, very informative. Very informative. Yep. And, um, you know, I'm excited that we are talking to this man mm -hmm. because I have watched him from afar, you know, yeah. um, in the news and all. Now, mm -hmm. one thing that drew me closer or made me pay more attention to what to he was doing was free education. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, when yeah. free education came, it came with a whole lot of confusion, for want it. of a better yeah. word, around it. But the way he was able to break it down, make people understand, yeah. you know, I felt like, okay, so this is somebody who knows so much about yeah. education yeah. and yeah. is helping build yeah. Ghana education. That's true. And then one day we're here and he decided to <laughs> teach on class arts. And I was like, oh, Once no, so teacher, this one won my heart, you know. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, our guest today is the Honorable Member of Parliament mm -hmm. of Busomche in the Ashanti region and Deputy Minister of Education, Education. Dr. Yao Osei Edichu. Please, so <laughs> Oh, well, Doctor, hello. you're welcome. Yes, you're welcome. Thank you, thank you. Two people in ten minutes. Yes, 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 because you have so much one person okay. can <laughs> handle you. I think you've had enough of the one on ones. So. Uh, yeah, first yeah. time ever yeah. getting yeah. two wonderful people mm -hmm. talking to me at the same time. Yeah. Oh, so how are you? Right and ten left. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you are surrounded. I'm, I'm doing great. I'm mm. doing great. I'm excited to be here. Wow, awesome. we are glad awesome. to have you. How's mm. the grounds looking? Oh, grounds is great. Nice. So much excitement mm. and. Um, I'm enjoying politics. It's good. Awesome. 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 All right. Let's start the intro yeah. now. Let's yeah. get straight yeah. into it now. Firma, you shoot your shot. Because I have this grenade I want to unleash. No, no, no. So, so, so let's start. Let's so, unleash gradually. Yeah. No, so um, for most of us, we got to know you, you know, in the news and um, not much was really mm. uh, heard about you and mm. then we saw some man in the news mm. talking of free mm. SHS mm. and trying to break down gold track mm. and green track. track. It's mm -hmm. not at all so confusing but the teacher mm. that you are, mm. you were yeah. able to break it down and then he decided to wow all of us by picking the, you know, come back to the blackboard to do mm. some teaching. Mm -hmm. Who are you? Where you have you come now. from? <laughs> <laughs> I get that all the time. Where have you been? Yeah. yeah. Um, about the teaching, you know, you called your program Class Act. Yes. Mm -hmm. So my teaching had to be a class act. Yeah. Okay. Because, you, you see, you set a high standard for me by the name <laughs> of your <laughs> teaching program. <laughs> yeah. So and, and you it, nailed it. Nailed it. You nailed it. It has to be a class act. Yeah. And um, I've, I've taught for many years. Mm -hmm. And... Um, in Ghana, after my 
sixth form i did national service mm. and taught for one year no let's go let's and go way back before the, to the beginning the, 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 oh, the, 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 yeah who are your parents who are your oh, siblings my mm -hmm. parents oh good um uh my father has passed on okay um he was a cocoa farmer at where at manso i mean there's a village called antobam you walk okay. those days there was no car going walk 10 miles to get to the mm. village okay we live in a hamlet a house by ourselves in the middle of the huko farm and that's where i had my formative years mm. and before i started school in my native town of jache in the okay. Asante region right oh, jache prom so. jache prom so. okay yeah. yeah that's where i had my mm. primary school education middle school and then went mm. to the most famous high school in Ghana, Jachi <laughs> Pramsu Senior High School. Mighty, Mighty Japas. Ja <laughs> <laughs> but so, what was the name of your primary school? Do you remember? Mm -hmm. Jachi Anglican. Okay, it's still there. Oh, of course. And then nice. I went to Jachi Anglican Middle mm -hmm. School. Okay. But I didn't finish the whole middle school. After Form 3, I passed the common entrance and left. Oh, so you're a shark mm -hmm. since. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and left for Jachi Pramsu Senior High School. And then from there, I went to do my sixth form. Mm. at Kumasi High School. Was your father an educated man? No, he did some night school, uh, so he mm. could read, she. Okay. But besides that, no, he wasn't, and my mother, likewise, okay. I did not have any education, and there were no books in my f house, so mm. you, you can just read, and so I took it upon myself to buy my own books when I was a kid. Wow. I used to weave baskets. Mm. I go to the jungle, get my cane and we use in making baskets and I'll go and sell in Kumasi. After huh. I, I'll say we get about 20 baskets, I'll put it on there. How old were you then? Yeah. I ran about 12, 13, I was wow. doing my own. Wow. So with the baskets, take it to Kumasi, sell them. And my first stop was Methodist Book Depot mm. at Emroom in Kumasi. Yeah. I'll kill. I'll go there and buy my book. And I remember the first book that I bought from, I bought from there, The Adventures of Yakentinka. <laughs> yeah, never you remember that story? Oh, yeah, very interesting. Mm. So I was my own librarian and mm. everything, trying to make sure I can have access to books. Of course, from there you go to the full line and buy yourself some, some books. <laughs> wow, you had yeah. siblings? <laughs> yes, yes. Younger yes. or older? Oh, younger and older. Okay. There were eight of us. Wow. Uh, and I was kind of in the middle, the fourth one, with four behind me and three. Ahead of me. Were they the, your older siblings were also in school and doing older siblings? Just... You see, yeah, they all. My older one oh. <laughs> went to school when he was about eighteen. Wow. He didn't get opportunity, so about eighteen, he was a Jehovah Witness, and because in the church everybody was reading, mm. so when he was about eighteen, he's called Jones uh, of Uriah Malcolm. Eighteen, he decided that he would go to school, and he went to school and graduated from middle school. Wow. But there was no money for him to go to senior high school. Are you also Jehovah's Witness? No. Okay. Uh, and then my other sibling, older, the second, couldn't go to school. And my mom tells of the story of how she was going to write her name in school. They went close to the headmaster's uh, uh, house, and somehow my mom, my mom changed her mind that, oh, oh. you're a girl. Oh! <laughs> So she didn't go to school. Mm. And then the one after her went to school, and then the rest of us. And when we say school, we mean middle school. We're not talking about high school because mm. among all of them, uh, there were just two of us who went to high school. Commander okay. couldn't afford, he couldn't mm. afford to take care of two people in high school. Mm. Yeah. So I remember passing the common entrance, the equivalent of BEC. At the time, he needed 40 CDs so that I'll pay the deposit to go to Jasha Pram. So, as day student, don't even talk about boredom. Mm. Buying the trunk <laughs> and the clothes, no. No, it won't happen. Yeah, so um, interestingly, he couldn't get the loan for the CDC. He went mm. from village to village in the Antobam wow. area talking to friends. Um, and he couldn't. He was saddened by the fact that I couldn't. And then he, I was not going to be able to go. And then my younger brother, who came directly after me, came up with an idea that saved me and save my education and everything. Sitting here mm. is because of him. What did he do? Yeah, what, what he did was my uncles had, were rearing some pigs, and he was taking care of it. So they had given him some of the pigs. Okay. And so he just said, why don't we go and sell the pigs? A big one, probably wow. you get the money. And then my dad gave me money, went to Jache. My uncle sold the pig, we got 42 CDs. Mm. 
So it was sold on Sunday. Monday, I was paying my deposit at Gacha Pram. So what was the name of that brother? Thomas. Where is he? Uh, he's, he's in Germany and he still has business. He go back and forth. Wow. He, he's done so well. Wow. And so had it not been for him, Life will have been different. Wow. We yeah. say thank you to him. Yeah. And then you were in high, um, Kumasi High School. Kumasi High School for sixth form. Yeah. And when I went to Kumasi High, interestingly, those there were complaining that Kumasi High didn't have all the bells and whistles and the beautiful dining halls. And we had mm. dining hall, assembly mm. hall, and they were complaining. But to me, Kumasi High was like heaven. Of course. Yeah. Coming from the Asia Prime Party. <laughs> <laughs> Which year was this? Which year? 1983. 85. Okay. I finished and then from there I went to tech. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did land economy. And yeah, so yeah. Th you land economy. Mm. And then later on it see, turned education. to education. education. Yeah. yeah. You see, land economy is an interesting sub uh, course. You do literally almost everything construction and economics and mathematics. So when I went to the US, I realized that taking quite a few courses in mathematics, in land mm. economy. So I decided that, okay, um, given all the available opportunities, of course, I started out as a security guard in the U.S. Mm. Yeah, my first two years, I was a security guard, a wow. watchman. And I remember putting on my security guard clothes for the first time going to work in the U.S. Yeah. I remember the security guard at Land Valuation Board. <laughs> I said, oh, <laughs> man, I'm like him now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so yeah. how did it feel, you know, with your education? Yeah, because with... the, the thing was that I was getting paid $4.50 an hour, and that mm. monthly I was making more than being around the economy. Of course, that was wow. good money. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, and I was glad that I had a job to do, mm. so I had no regrets. Uh, but I also knew that I was not going to stay that way, mm -hmm. and that I needed to seriously. Uh, look at my future and, and I had a wonderful opportunity of meeting people who guided me as to how I could become a teacher. Mm. Wow. So I became what in the um, US they call a substitute teacher, mm -hmm. which means if the teacher is not there, mm -hmm. you can leave the classroom empty. It's not like, just like here, mm -hmm. when, when teacher is not there, nobody cares about it's the kid. No. In the US, you cannot leave a classroom Without, without a teacher. A teacher. Wow. So when teachers are sick and they can't come to school, they'll call you up and say, can you go to this school and work there? Okay. Mm. So I did that for about two years. Wow. And then the government of California decided that high school should be four years and not three. Mm. Okay. But they did not have the buildings. Mm -hmm. So they decided that they would do year-round schools, which in Ghana is a double track. Mm. Okay. Yeah. So the whole idea was, okay, we'll make the school day longer, but we're going to make the school days shorter mm. so we can fit three batches of students, two at a time, mm. while the two are there, one will be on vacation. And because of that, they were hiring more teachers, and I got the opportunity to be hired uh, to mm. teach mathematics wow. after I've taken some more math courses uh, at the University of California. But in the U.S., mm -hmm. you also did the new design charter, charter schools. schools. Yeah. Tell us about that. That's yeah, in California, it, right? Yeah, California, yeah. Los Angeles. Um, mm. The interesting thing is that one thing I love about Americans is that they don't hold themselves to ransom and say that this is all that we know and therefore it's not going to change. The American public schools were failing them. Mm. Public schools were not doing well. So when public schools are failing, Everybody come and say, no, it has to change. Mm -hmm. So they, they, they wrote, um, a commission wrote a report called A Nation at Risk okay. under President Reagan. A Nation at Risk was saying that our public education system is failing, and if nothing is done, America will lose its competitiveness. So they didn't want America to lose its competitiveness. Yeah. Therefore, they decided that something needed to be done. Right. So the idea was that if you have innovative idea and you believe that you can set up schools that will outperform the public schools, bring your proposal, the federal government will give you about uh, 450,000, close to half a million, mm -hmm. to just begin the process. And once you set the school up, then the government pays you the same amount of money that they will have given to public schools. Mm -hmm. So if public school students were getting about $8,000 a year at the time, so they will just give you the money. Once the students enroll, instead of giving that to the school districts, they will give you that money. Mm -hmm. And out of that pot of money, uh, you use that to pay your teachers, pay your rent if you are renting, 
pay your mortgage if you have purchased your own building and run the school and then every five years they will evaluate you. Mm -hmm. If your schools are doing well, you are in business. If your schools are not doing well, then they will take away the charter. Wow. wow. So right. I had taught for 10 years at the time, actually mm -hmm. 9 into the 10th year, mm -hmm. and I just felt like if Americans, white guys, can send, write this proposal, I too can. Mm -hmm. Because I know something. And yeah. I can bring some element of Ghanaian values mm -hmm. to the school and change the culture of the school and get the students to do well. So I wrote the proposal, wrote my first grant, and I was shocked one day I went on the web checking and I saw my name there. Wow. Mm. And I said to myself, wow, can't believe it. Damn, damn. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. Some yeah, boy so from Jachi Pram so you know, and then and yeah. Oh, 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 yeah. Not to play the race card, <laughs> mm -hmm. but on that, did you face any opposition? Oh boy, where you're coming from? it was tough. Yeah. Tough. Because you see, after I got the money, then I had to go through a public hearing process mm. to get the city to approve the charter. I was live on TV defending wow. Uh, wow. why I want to set up a school. Mm. Yeah. And, and in their mind setting there, they were thinking, who the hell are you? Exactly. <laughs> who does it take yeah. years? And then you want to tell us. That can do and I was the first African to do that in the US. Yeah. Uh, looking at you and saying, who the heck and, that and you proposed some new stuff oh, yeah, as well. Of course. Yeah, because yeah. I, I proposed a school system where we have career pathways. Mm -hmm. We were doing a school from primary six all the way to high school, seven okay. years. Mm -hmm. And we proposed that the students would come to school on Saturdays okay. wow. so that they have extra time to study. We proposed that they wear uniforms. And those days, uniform was not common. Mm -hmm. uh, we proposed that we have a longer school year. And we also said every student that comes to us will have to do biology, chemistry, and physics, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. which was also not common. And then the one thing that got their attention was that every student would take classes in engineering. Okay. I don't know what went through my head, but I felt like engineering um, was the foundation of any society, and therefore I needed American children to study engineering. We <laughs> partnered with um, a community college, two-year college, and in America, the law allows them to offer courses to high school students even though they haven't graduated from high school, they mm. can still do college courses. So every student in my school was required, as part of our graduation requirement, to enroll in engineering course. And they offered the courses, the college courses on my campuses. Mm. You know, so you, when you got to America, you mm. were a security yes. guard. Mm -hmm. What happened? You know, just quickly uh, tell us uh, what happened yeah. between the uh, time you were a security guard and, and the time you were making all these educational reforms for the United States of America. America. What happened yeah. in well, between? You see, the thing was this. I remember going to get my driver's license mm -hmm. and I was writing the exam and I lifted up my head and saw some guy sitting there. He looked Ghanaian to me. And then he waited till I finished the exams. And then he said, are you from Ghana? I said, yeah. He said, which school did you go to? I said, tech. And he said, oh, I also went there. He said, well, you know what? I'm a college professor. I've just been sent to Redwoods to go and teach at the university. Mm -hmm. So he said, what are you doing? I said, I'm a security guy. I said, oh, but I can become a teacher. And then said, oh. And he showed me the test that I needed to take. So yeah. I went to church the next Sunday and talked to some of the church elders at the Church of Pentecost. Okay. Mm -hmm. I had just started there. And um, one... Um, now he's a pastor, Otu, and one Asante who has passed on. Both of them said, okay, we'll help you register for the test. So Otu gave me a check, Asante okay. gave me money to go and buy the prep book. Wow. And then I went and sat for the C-Best. And the math, I almost got a perfect score. Mm. Oh, wow. Yeah. I well, you got, had it already. Oh, yeah, so yeah, so yeah. I almost yeah. got a perfect score. <laughs> and we, le so we learned the hard way. <laughs> so, so that is how I began. And then mm. they showed me. And that's one of the benefits of what Ghanaian churches abroad has done for Ghanaian immigrants. Oh, okay. People don't know that they are the stabilizing force and influence mm. that I happen to go to a Ghanaian church and because we are all immigrants, they find ways to help, help you out. You. Wow. I remember going there with housing challenges and Church of Pentecost elders came together. They oh. got me a place to stay. Are you very religious? Uh, yes, I'm religious. Okay. Uh, but I don't wear it on my sleeve. I mean, you don't need to. <laughs> As Americans, we say. Yeah, you don't need to. I mean, yeah. So, so the bottom line is that um, the churches, Ghanaian churches that have started abroad, really facilitated the integration of Ghanaians mm. into the American society. The pastor became your guidance and counseling person. Yeah. Who should you? You can go here. Hey, do you do have your green card. If you don't have it, We'll get a lawyer for you, mm. we'll do this for you. So long story short, once we took on 
I took on that uh, opportunity of becoming a substitute teacher. Mm -hmm. That is what transitioned me into mm -hmm. a full-time uh, teaching. Substitutes were just being there uh, for two days, three days, and then you move on. Remember mm -hmm. going to one school, American kids are terrible. <laughs> so, so I went to one school and the teacher had left a note that, yeah. uh, be careful about Johnny, he's a bad kid. Wow. I was going to be there for three days, and I said to myself, I'm not going to allow Johnny to terrorize me. Yeah. So the kids came to school, and then they sat in my class, and I said, who is Johnny? He raised up his hand and said, Johnny, you're going to be the, my monitor, the class monitor for this whole class. <laughs> I've been told that you are the best kid in this class, and the rest of them started laughing. I'm sure Johnny himself was shocked. <laughs> oh, and Johnny was so happy. Yeah. Johnny became somebody... After the kids leave, you will come and say, be careful about that boy. Oh, yeah. Oh, now Johnny's Johnny. just fine. <laughs> <laughs> so I did that for some time and then became a full-time teacher. Mm, yeah. Now, yeah. yours is a fascinating story. I mean, a cuckoo farmer's son mm. became a basket weaver mm. at a point, mm -hmm. land economist, mm. turned security guard, mm. now an educationist, mm. turned politician. Mm. How did this happen? I mean, Nobody has analyzed it and broken it down like this for me. I mean, basically, that is your life. <laughs> that, that is you. Yes. I mean. Yeah, you, you've found out all the chapters of my exactly. book. Exactly, <laughs> yeah. But it, well, how easy or how difficult yeah. was it for you going into politics? Is, is this something you had always wanted to do? Interestingly, uh, I, have, I had always, when I was a kid, I saw posters of politicians and I was, always felt like, wow, this is very interesting. You mm. see there are posters on the wall and, mm -hmm. um, and I said, hmm. Politics is interesting. At, when I started teaching, I had mapped out my career going for it. Mm. I wanted to be a teacher. I wanted to be a school administrator, a principal. And then after the principalship, I wanted to move into uh, politics. And mm. everything was falling in oh, place. Oh, yeah, yeah, everything was falling in place. I knew I was going to teach for um, 10 years. 10 years came, opportunity came for me to be a school administrator in Bell schools. And I was going to do that for 10 years. Mm -hmm. And after that, I was going to move into politics. But in fact, I was thinking more American politics. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I was very much part of the, their political system and contributing to Obama's campaign and all those things. I, I'm a political junkie. Can mm -hmm. sit in front of TV, watch politics, get me excited. I remember Bush the second, his campaign, I was going to meetings. Mm -hmm. That was when I became like a Republican. And then yeah. I switched back. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but the interesting yeah. thing was that I was not thinking Ghanaian politics. Mm. No. I was thinking American, American politics. politics. I wanted to naturalize and become a politician. And it made American. sense. You had yeah. lived yeah. there. You I had lived there businesses. 20 plus years. Yeah. They the loved business. me. You had no plan of coming back home. No, no I had plans of supporting. Okay. But coming to stay mm. was not in the, in the works for me. And I'm sure you were making good money. Oh, good money. I can tell you, <laughs> if you make, look at the American income per year, mm -hmm. I was top 5% of the country in terms Whoa. of annual Whoa. income. Then you so, are rich. Uh, what happened to you? What I mean, me? why did you decide to leave all this and come back to Jache Prime? So come back to Accra, come back to Ghana. Why? Interesting. Um, I had 200 workers. Wow. Um, in America? In America. Mm -hmm. And I had a wonderful time interviewing Americans to come and work for me. There are times when I have to pinch myself and say, is this <laughs> your not dreaming. <laughs> Am I dreaming no. when a white person sits at the other end of the table yeah. being interviewed and asking me, can you please hire me? I'll work for you. So it is education that took me to America. Yeah. It is education that made me who I was. It's education that brought me back. Mm -hmm. Because when Anado Danko Kufado visited one of my schools when he was running for president the second mm -hmm. time and uh, came to the school, and then um, I was introduced. There were a whole lot of people there, including senior minister, a whole lot of people that mm -hmm. came with him. And then he asked me, how were we able to do this? Mm -hmm. How did the Ghanaian come to America and build schools for Americans? Mm -hmm. And then I said, Nana, I'll talk to you later. And said, no, 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 <laughs> say it in front of everyone. Say it in front of everyone. I didn't know what he was going to say after that. So I explained the process to him, how I became a teacher and a school developer, principal, CEO. And then after I finished, he said, would you consider coming back to help me change the education system? Mm -hmm. And I said, yeah, I will consider. And I took it seriously. I had a meeting with my mentor. Mm -hmm. After that, a former congressman whose seat I wanted to run for. Mm -hmm. And then we had lunch. I invited him to lunch. We went to Sizzlers, a very 
uh, one line joint and I asked him, somebody's running for president in Ghana. He wants me to come and help him change the education system mm. and implement free senior high school. Um, and then you also know that I want to be in America and become a politician, politician. and just like you. And then before I could end the sentence, he said, Yao, we appreciate the work you've done here. Your school is one of the best in the state of California. But I'll tell you one thing. America can do without you. But maybe mm. your country cannot do without you. Wow. So go. Wow. wow. Th that must have anything. hit you real no, hard. No, no. He spoke to my heart. Yes. Yeah. I mean, straight in. Yeah. I didn't ask him any question. We just talked about something else. Mm. I was fully convinced. His word yeah. has transformed whatever I was thinking. Mm. And I went home, spoke with my wife, and said, um, after speaking with Dr. Mervyn Daimley, Honorable Mervyn Daimley, I mm. think we need to go back mm. to Ghana. A lot of people came to me and said, you are going to be frustrated in Ghana. Have well, you been frustrated? <laughs> no. Are you kidding me? No. Mm. How? I'm, excited. I'm the most exciting person, politician probably in this country. Wow. Maybe you should share Ma something wow. yeah, we don't yeah. know with us. Politics is fun. Really? I tell you. Well, that's the not most the story rewarding we hear. job you can <laughs> ever have in your life. Mm. How do you see politics in Ghana? Great opportunity for transformation of our great nation. So, so whose idea mm -hmm. is double track Let in me Ghana? Say, of course, the president owns everything because mm -hmm. he took a chance. But he called you in he, to come he, and he, help. He called me in to come and help. But you see, if you look at double track within the context of leapfrogging, mm -hmm. <laughs> the idea of a senior, free senior high school was, of course, the president's idea. And the double track? And the, double track. the double track, I had taught in it. Okay. Mm -hmm. I had taught in double track. Yeah. Uh -huh. So, of course. You and suggested it to the of president. Course, I suggested yeah. it to my minister. It went to the president. But initially, yeah. how did it sound to your minister? Yeah. No, no. You see, my minister is someone who is open to ideas. Okay. Right. So, so he said, okay, given the situation, this will work. Mm. So, my minister embraced it. And let me tell you, if he had not embraced it, he couldn't have gotten to the press. Yeah, yeah. The minister embraced it and saw that given the situation we were in, that is something that will save the situation. And last Friday, complementary education agency bill was passed, which is going to create a space for 35 and 40 year olds to go to school mm. okay. and, and become a electrician, become talents, become teachers, become nurses. Mm. And this is something that's a watershed moment for this country. So when we talk about free senior high school for the youth, we're also talking about transformative education for the adults. Yeah. So you can lift up the bottom and give people hope. And for, for just that, I'm happy to say, um, my coming back has been fruitful and has wow. been useful. As a person, <laughs> As a how person, do you unwind? How do you relax? Unwind. Uh, <laughs> write. Read. Uh -huh. I love reading. Mm. Any book by Malcolm Gladwell, read it. Okay. And I can't wait to see his next book. The David last and book was, Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, David and Go uh, you are Malcolm Gladwell. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Oh, boy, boy, boy. <laughs> what a yeah. dog saw. I'm reading it over. Okay. Allies, I'm mm -hmm. reading. Yes. Um, the last one was uh, talking to strangers. Mm -hmm. um, you see, it's, it's opening your minds to life's intricacies, how people succeed, how people don't. And by the way, if you look at Napoleon Hill, mm -hmm. um, saying that there's nothing that man has desired or a woman has desired so badly and had not gotten it. Mm, that the course. power is here. Yeah. And if you want to change this country and believe in the fact that the country can be changed, and the vast majority believe that this country can be changed, mm -hmm. Ghana will change. You love mm. music? Of course. What kind of music do you listen to? Gospel and, and then high life. I do gospel. Um, I also do high life. Local like, gospel, foreign local gospel? gospel. Uh, actually, local gospel. Okay, oh, so okay. who are Diana favorites? Hamilton, Diana Okay. Hamilton. Oh. Yeah, he's mine. <laughs> Adam is mine. You can't sing a song. line of Adam. Oh, no. <laughs> Don't don't get put me in the trouble. No no no, I can't. No no no, I can't sing a dumb line. But it's a recite. I love um every one of her songs. It's uplifting, and she's very professional in terms of her music and everything about her. The only thing is that she when you watch her video, her clothes. 
This different one is one. And I said, oh, can you wear just two for me? No, she got it. So she's loving it. I mean, please as well. So it's almost like a fashion show. Yeah. It's all part of it. You know, there are others who are also watching the video because well, of the what she's wearing. Like, yeah, so you have to get everything. You know, we yeah. have to get everything. She has to keep everyone in that one video. Yeah, so, so yesterday I was watching Abdul, right? Yeah. And I said, yeah, you have beautiful clothes, but can you do two instead of five? No, we like it. We like it. We love to see it. And your favorite uh, highlight? Uh, uh, that is number. What's your favorite Daddy Lumba song? Um, so many of them. So many so of them. So like some two, three? Um, uh, ooh, there are too many. I can't even if think of them. If you're pushed to the wall. Yeah. Um, top three. If you're pushed to the wall, top three. No, I, I won't allow myself to be pushed to the wall. Because you're ready. <laughs> if you were to mention some of the songs, yeah. <laughs> so men say that. Yeah, men say that. It's not bad. Yeah. You're in Tiobia. Uh-uh, that one. Why, why, why? Sometimes why it's you, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I remember there's a kid who, during the primary, I always wanted to teach uh, in mm. the classroom. So during the primary, I went and taught in the school in Feyase. Oh, yeah. Okay. One day in my constituency. And then there was this kid who was answering all my questions. So I came and said, hey, young man, um, how are you? And I asked the teachers about him, uh, Emmanuel. And then they said, oh, this child is struggling. Look at his uniform. Things are not good. So I adopted him, mm. not formally, but and he was in junior high school too. So I bought him clothes from U.S. shoes and other things. And today he's going to second year of medical school. Wow! At UDS, wow. yeah. And that time school was not free, so I paid. Mm -hmm. And and now he's uh, going to second year of medical school. Wow! And the family is happy because we've made an impact. Of course, their collective right. effort. So when you are excited about things like that. I think that's what keeps me going. When I remember that, interestingly, there's another kid called Emanuela. I don't know me and Emmanuel. Mm. Then that one, it was I think it was divine providence for her. Yeah. I was yeah. passing by through Krasi, a village in Tepa on the mm. Tepa Road. I was going to the funeral of uh, Tepa Mahne's father, and then something clearly told me that I should go to that house. There's a kid I need to take care of. Wow. wow. Do you pray often? Oh yes, of course. Okay. Daily. So, so, so you think sometimes God speaks to oh, you? Oh, yeah. yeah. I think for that um, f that particular instance, maybe the mother had been praying. Mm. Yeah. So it had nothing to do with my prayers, but uh, the mother had been praying. So you were the vessel. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, I told my bodyguard and other people that we need to go to that house. Very bad. Um, the, if you look at the building, mm. mad belts. Mm. And we went in there, coming from the funeral, it was raining. But I said, we lost our way. I said, no, we still have to go to that house. Wow. So finally we found the house. We went there and the whole compound, ragged, um, bad place. And, um, and I asked the kids, oh, what are you doing? The only children there, pounding mm. for food and that. Thing. So I said, hey, how are you? How are you? And, and they couldn't, so who is this? Yeah. yeah. And then all of a sudden, a woman walks in. Uh, coming out of the market or something. So we said, Mom, do you have a child uh, who is at school going age? And I said, yeah, yeah, Emanuela. And then Emanuela came from the bedroom, wow. just loved this young, uh, beautiful woman. And and then he said, oh, he's in primary six, and uh, things are difficult for him. I said, okay, I'm going to adopt her. He said, what? I'm going to adopt her. Wow. So the next day I sent my research assistant there, and when she went there, they were at church praying because they thought I wouldn't come back. Mm. <laughs> wow. wow. So I adopted wow. Emanuela. Now she's in a boarding school in Kumase. Before the COVID-19, she was in a boarding school. Junior had her own head to be in boarding yeah. school. Mm. And I bring her to Accra. And um, I want Emanuela's storyline to be different. Um, she said she wants to be a nurse. And I said, you'll be a medical doctor. I love nurses, yeah. but you wow. be a medical doctor. If <laughs> yeah. I'm going to support you. Mm -hmm. I walk into library in Accra and I saw a group of kids there they happened to come from the independent avenue mm. I fell in love with them I adopted their class <coughs> bought them books work with them pay for vacation classes for them they've graduated this year from junior high and I hope they'll go to top mm. our senior high school interesting no, stuff I'm, there but I'm, I'm, yeah, allow us of to tell course I'm, I'm sure we can just sit here all day to listen to you and to talk to you you mm -hmm. are such a fantastic human being yeah. and I'm excited you know mm -hmm. about having this conversation because we've had to know you beyond what we see in the yeah. news and all and the passion you have the commitment that you have to um, ensuring that Ghanaian children are transformed mm -hmm. in fact it's the only way that we can transform exactly. our nation thank you very much for deciding to come back to Ghana mm -hmm. to help we say a big thank you to your family as well yeah 
for giving you to, to us. us. <laughs> and you know, like that Lumba will say, Honorable won't say that. Won't say that. Both that is so. Honorable won't say that. Won't say that. We've been together. talking to the Deputy Minister of Education, the Honorable Dr. Yao Ose who is also the Member of Parliament mm -hmm. for Busumche in the Ashanti region. Thank you very much. This has been the Upside Down Show, proudly brought to you by Vodafone Vodafone. Ghana. The future indeed is exciting. My name ready. is Bumedi Nami. And mine is Nana Tufu Obuate. Many thanks for watching. And now, Doc. We're doing this one for you. Yeah. Trust me, this is in the background. Yeah. <laughs> the pair of dog can do the two-step. Oh yes. Yeah. <laughs>